Hey guys, it's Chris from Steeda, and today we're going to reduce body roll on this S550 with a set of Steeda front and rear sway bars. We're going to go ahead and do a product review and then an installation, show you how to get them installed in this car, and then most importantly, a before and after with a slalom, before totally stock and after with the Steeda front and rear sway bars and a bunch of other Steeda parts as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So diving in, we have the S550 front and rear sway bars fitting your 2015 plus Mustangs. The front bar is an inch and three eighths in diameter. You have four adjustable spots on the billet ends. And then the rear is an inch and an eighth in diameter with three adjustable spots. One of my favorite benefits that stands out about the sway bars versus the factory bars is the fact that the factory end links only have one hole, but the sway bar is actually pressed into place, which inhibits the rigidity of the bar itself. Now here at Steeda, we use the machine billet ends on both the front and rear bars. Front bar giving you four positions, the rear bar giving you three. All kinds of adjustability. With those four adjustable positions on the front bar, you'll be able to be 42 to 97% stiffer than a factory performance package sway bar. And in the rear, you could be 54 to 138% stiffer than a factory rear bar. All kinds of adjustability. Installation for the front bar is pretty straightforward. It's a direct fit replacement for your factory bar and mounts. We include the mount and the bushings that you can use to install this bar. And on top of that, we include lifetime grease as well. You reuse the bolts, not too shabby. Now on the rear bar with the three adjustable positions, it takes up a bit more space than a factory bar with just one position. So we include an adapter to relocate the brake line bracket, as well as lifetime grease in the mounts with the bushings for an easy installation. All right, so that about wraps things up for this product review. We're gonna hop on over to the garage and get wrenching. First things first, jumping into the installation. The front sway bar is what we're gonna start off with first. Uh, you wanna get the car ready to go on the lift. If you have one, Jack and Jack Stands does perfectly fine as well. We're gonna start at the engine bay, do some things up there, and then get underneath the car. So first things first, we're gonna take care of this mass airflow sensor, get it out of the way. You have these just kind of push that out of the way. And then next up, you want to disconnect all the PCV lines to the intake. So you want to get these guys, there's a clip on the back side here, just push it out, put it aside, you push down the yellow here, take care of that. Then next you want to grab a flat head screwdriver and loosen up the coupling that connects to the that connects the intake tube to the throttle body. After that, you want to grab a 10 millimeter socket and loosen up this bolt near the strut tower so you can get the intake out of the way. At that point, you are ready to pull this guy out. Carefully remove the intake and set it aside. Put this back in there for safekeeping. So then at that point you have access to the sway bar mount on the driver's side. Um, obviously the alternator is in the way for the back bolt. You'll have to remove a panel here that I'll show you how to do once we have the car up in the air. Uh, but the front side obviously you have totally clear access to. Before you get the car up in the air you want to loosen the lugs.
once you have all your lugs loosened, go ahead and raise the car up in the air and then work your way around, taking care of all the lugs, not scratching your wheels. Once you have the car up in the air or up on jack stands and the wheels are removed, again, we'll start at the front. So what you're going to do is take care of this end link on the back side of the strut and disconnect it from the sway bar. So what you'll need is an 18 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter wrench. Put the wrench on the back side and your deep socket on the side towards the center of the car. Then you go ahead and loosen. And you go ahead and loosen. It's a locking nut, so it's going to give you feedback pretty much until you get it off. Almost. There we go. Then you just slide the end link out of the sway bar. You may have to turn the wheel a little bit to get it out. Just let it hang. I like to put the nut back on there so I don't lose it. It's not going anywhere. Go ahead and do the same thing the other side. Once you have both those end links removed, you can go back to the top of the car. So grab yourself a really long extension, 18 millimeter socket. You can get the front sway bar mount. I can see it. There it is. And that back bolt, you're gonna have to remove a plastic panel to get access to it from the wheel well, which we'll do that in a second here. Just see what you can do about getting these push pins out so you can get access. And if you have a plastic panel removal tool handy, that will help substantially as well. Then there's another one up here. Make sure to have your hand there so you can catch these pins as they come out. Because otherwise they'll fall in the belly pan and then you gotta fish them out that way. And there's the panel. All right, so grab your extension again. Now we're moving over to the passenger side. Slowly work your way down. If you have a GT or EcoBoost, it's gonna be a little bit easier because there's some cooler lines for either the transmission or the oil cooler that are a little in the way here. Just kind of snake it down. And slowly get it loose. It's gonna be a little hard to get loose on the first try because there's Loctite on these from the factory. And again, I would not take it all the way out. So you gotta loosen the other one too. Since you have the front one loosened, you can go ahead and take the back one off. So situations like this is where a ratcheting wrench comes in great. You're ready to get your last bolt. 
So a little bit of backstory on why I ease these out very evenly is that these mounts are frequently cross-threaded from the factory. So you don't want to put too much tension, sideways tension on either end of the mount. So if you back them out as evenly as possible, you prevent that from uh, becoming an issue when you put them back in. At this point, you're ready to pull out the sway bar. It's a great opportunity to grab a friend. One person pushes it through, the other person pulls it out. Um, there's really only one way to get it in and out. Uh, you're just gonna have to finagle it through the coolant hoses and stuff like that. Um, but it really does come out. You just push it through and then it comes out on the back side. So one thing to mention is if you're doing this on a GT350, on the GTs and EcoBoost, the sway bar mount is actually mounted to the sway bar itself. You can't take it off and you gotta have to work around the coolant hoses, hoses and stuff like that. However, on a 350, you're able to get this apart and away from the sway bar so you can dodge the oil cooler and the trans cooler and everything else that you have on the front of a 350. All right, so when you get to the point where the sway bar's about ready to come out, you dodge all those lines. If your car has Magneride, you're going to want to be careful of the Magneride sensor here in the lower control arm. Kind of push it back behind the strut, and it actually comes out sideways under the car, opposite of the way you put it in. So to do a quick little comparison between the Steeda front sway bar and the factory GT350 bar, um, 350 bars are obviously a little bit thicker than the GT performance package bars or any of the other trim level Mustangs with the exception of the 500, but the biggest value added here are these billet ends. And on top of that, you have the adjustable points. You have one point here on the GT350 bar and then the other bars as well. It's crimped here at the end into the bar itself. It's just, it's great for a factory bar, but if you're wanting to take it to the next level and have that adjustability, that ease of adjustability, depending on your spring rates and how you want your car set up for the drag strip or the autocross course or road course, whatever you plan on doing with your car, having that adjustability in your front sway bar is really gonna help a lot. So before you put your new sway bar in, what you're gonna wanna do is grab the grease packet that comes along with our kit a set of gloves because this stuff will stick around for a while on your hands. Peel this off. What you're gonna wanna do is take the bushing and coat pretty much all the surfaces on it. It's going to have metal on metal contact. Obviously on a sway bar, things are sliding back and forth this way as you're turning the vehicle. So you're gonna want a good amount of grease on the inside of the bushing. Just kind of stick your finger in there and rub it around. Again, highly recommend gloves for this because it's some gnarly stuff. Go ahead and slide it on the sway bar. Again, you really can't use too much grease. There you go. You can do the same thing with the other one. A little bit on the bar. You're ready to put the bar in. All right, you're ready to put the sway bar in.
And I gotta come over on the driver's side. And from the top. there. Next up, you got your mounts. You're going to go ahead and just place those over the bushings. So you want the flat side of the bushing facing towards the body of the car or the K-member. And uh, again, you just place the mount right on top so then it's ready to bolt down. Once you have your mounts in place, you grab your bolts and then go ahead and start threading them back in. Make sure you go by hand first. Don't start torquing things down like crazy and potentially cross thread these things because I'll tell you right now, I've cross threaded multiple. All right, so we're ready to attach the end link to the sway bar that's been installed in the car. Um, obviously, there's four different adjustment points. Quick crash course. The point that is closest to the front of the car is the stiffest point in terms of adjustability. And then the point in the back is the softest. What we recommend as a good starting point is one in from the softest. So three from the front or number two from the back. This is what you want to do. Obviously, this is all greased up, so this can move up and down. Pull it up into place. And slide your end link in. May require a little bit of persuasion. Go ahead and get your nut on there. You got your 18 millimeter on the back side. And your socket on the inside. And you'll know when it's tight. You don't want to crank on it too hard, it's just an end link. Go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. All right, one thing to note on Magnaride equipped vehicles, whether it's EcoBoost, GT, 350, 500, you name it, um, you're going to need to move this Magnaride cable away from the end link. What happens is when the car moves from left to right, or the steering moves left to right, rather, uh, you don't want this end link rubbing the Magnaride cable. So we're going to go ahead and pull out these Christmas trees for this cable right here. You got one on the front. And go ahead and pull the connection loose. It's just a push pin style connector, nothing crazy. And then there's another Christmas tree right here. And again, panel removal tool comes in great for situations like these. What you're going to want to do is relocate this cable under the strut and back up over here. Plug her back in. Don't bother getting rid of the Christmas trees in case you need to put it back or anything like that. But you're going to go ahead and zip tie either end so it doesn't go anywhere and again there is enough slack here to be able to do this and obviously on the lift here with uh, everything up in the air you're at full droop so you're not going to get any lower than this doesn't need to be super tight just to hold it in place and you go ahead and do the same thing here 
Now after you're done tightening up the end links, go ahead and grab your plastic cover, reinstall that with the plastic push pins, as well as the intake. Go ahead and get that reinstalled and then you're ready to move to the rear. All right, moving on to the rear, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is loosen up this end link and the brake line bracket. All right, 10 millimeter socket will loosen up the brake line bracket. You take this bracket and set it aside because you'll be using the Steeda bracket in its place. Go ahead and pull the end link out and set it aside. You'll pull the end link out on the other side as well and then we'll move on to the mounts under the car. So 13 millimeter socket, these bolts here. And you go ahead and loosen up the mount on the other side as well. All right, at this point, you're ready to pull the sway bar off the car. At this point, you have both of the end links um, away from the sway bar. The mounts are dropped as well. It's honestly just hanging there by the exhaust. Um, one thing I do want to point out is the 350 guys do have, I think 500 guys as well, they do have a skid plate, um, the diffuser here that goes all the way to the um, exhaust uh, hangers here. So you will need to make sure to remove that um, if you want to get access. Well, you can do it with the skid plate there, but it's a lot easier to do if you take that skid plate diffuser off. Um, we went ahead and removed it so you can see what we're doing a lot better. Um, anyways, so you just kind of finagle it loose. Make sure your end links are out and off to the side. Kind of push it through. Kind of push it through on one side here and then drop it down. One thing to note as you're pulling it out, pay attention to the way the sway bar is bent. The side or in the middle, you can see it's aiming downward. So you want to make sure to put the Steeda bar in the same exact way. Quick comparison of the factory GT350 bar in comparison to the Steeda sway bar. Again, like I said with the front, those billet ends are the biggest value added in comparison to these pressed ends on the factory bar. Um, you also have your uh, Steeda mounts that come with it. We're getting ready to grease those up. But in terms of the adjustment points on the Steeda sway bar, you have three for the rear bar. We're gonna wanna go to the full loosest um, or softest setting, I should say. So that is the one closest to the front. Um, again, I'll show you when we're putting the end link together and everything else, but all in all, uh, not too shabby. We're gonna go ahead and grease up these bushings. Always good to have a glove here. Go ahead and slide that bushing on. Move it around. Go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Now you're ready to put the Steeda sway bar up into place. And remember, the part of the bar aiming down is exactly what you want aiming down. Put it up into place the same exact way you took it out. Try to be careful not to scratch that beautiful Steeda blue. Sometimes the mounts will fall off and hit you in the foot. Totally okay, just grab it, put it up into place. Just get everything hand started. So in hindsight, you could probably just add the mounts after either or. Depends on how quick you can get it up in the place. Apparently I'm not quick enough. This helps to get these things hand tight to start. Not to zap them in with the impact and cross thread something. Once you have everything started by hand, you can go ahead and tighten down with your ratchet.
Now that you ditch the uh, factory brake line bracket, you want to grab your Steeda bracket and the nylock nut that you will use on the back side. Like I said, you remember you want to use the softest hole, which is the furthest outside. Slide that in there. The larger hole goes on top of there. Go ahead and get the nut from the end link and get that started by hand. So grab your Allen key and your 18 millimeter wrench. Get to tightening. Now keep in mind, you have to orientate this bracket up. So once it starts pressing against the sway bar, make sure that bracket stays up. Now the reason why we choose the softest setting is because that's a really solid starting point for the average spring rates you will see on these Mustangs as well as the um, aftermarket spring rates like you know our Steeda springs and stuff like that. That's just a great starting point. As we've talked about in the past in a lot of our videos, the combination of spring rate and sway bar stiffness all work together in unison to help you accomplish your goals on track. So go ahead and, like I said, make sure that's at the 12 o'clock position. So you grab your 10 millimeter, sorry, grab your 10 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter wrench for the back um, on the included 13 millimeter nylock nut. Go ahead and put that on the back of the factory bolt. Use your wrench to hold that into place while you tighten. Go ahead and repeat the process on the other side and your rear sway bar installation is complete. Ford Performance did an amazing job getting this GT350 all sorted out from the factory, but if you really want to take things to the next level, the Steeda sway bars as well as the rest of the Steeda suspension components are really going to help take this car to the next level and make it competitive in KMC or on the road course, at a time trial, wherever. So if you want to pick up parts for your EcoBoost, your GT, your 350, your 500, we have everything right here at Steeda.com. Go ahead and comment below. Let us know what other S550 content you want to see right here on the Steeda YouTube channel. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can see right when that new video drops right on your phone. And don't forget the most important thing, speed matters.